Hello, 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 hello. Franz Cantor here, cartoonist, illustrator, and tune talker. And I'm here, I'm going to do another drawing. Surprise, surprise. Um, okay, so what are we going to draw today? Well, I'm actually drawing something a little bit different today. I am going to draw a horse. And you might say, well, that's a very strange idea for exaggerating a character or a caricature, isn't it? Not at all, my, re my reply to you is, because really caricature is, for me at least anyway, it's a process. And um, it's a process of exaggeration and simplification. Now, I like uh, cartoons because of their their ability to capture an emotion or an energy or an action or something and you know they, they have to be simplified in order to be replicated hand-drawn animation anyway um, the character i'm drawing is mr ed so it's a tv star an animal he's a horse a palomino actually in point of actual fact and uh, that's the subject. So I've actually tried to work out from a couple of different sources uh, something nice that I could play with. And I've transferred it to uh, the grey paper. But we'll get into that in a second. Now, of course, uh, you know, the usual things we're talking about the, with a caricature, you know, like the T-zone, etc. <laughs> it may not. It may not apply. This sort of like a J zone. Uh, it may not apply for um, for horses. Um, but you know, generally speaking, I'm going to focus a lot on the head. Yeah, obviously, you know, it's going to be a portrait. Um, so it'll be head and shoulders and a tiny bit of the body, perhaps to give it a bit of context. And um, I'm exaggerating certain features. I'll explain that as I go, right? So we're going to have some fun. Now, some background. Mr. Ed's American uh, television situation comedy produced by Filmways. This has been a Filmways presentation, darling. Also do Green Acres and Petticoat Junction and the Beverly Hillbillies. Uh, it aired from 1961 until 1966. And uh, it's credited as uh, Arthur Lubin, who um, helped make uh, Francis the Talking Mule uh, movies. There's five of those, six movies, Francis the Talking Mule, uh, which were directed by Lubin. And um, he's credited as uh, the creator of uh, the Mr. Ed show. So there's 143 episodes. Um, some of the uh, stars are, um, let's see, voices. Alan Rocky Lane did the voice of Mr. Ed. The show starred Alan Young, Connie Hines, and uh, who else? There's a few others that we'll, we'll, we can talk about as we go. I can't remember the, the, their, all of their names, but uh, you'll remember their faces anyway, which is which is fun. Now, this is Mr. Ed. This is how we'd open up. Hello, I'm Mr. Ed. And he would talk like this. And there's a lot of flexibility in his, in his face, in his jaw. We'll look at that uh, as we go. His eyes are also quite iconic as well because they're not uh, forward facing. They're a side, the horses are different. They're different to us. So this is a horse now. This is a human, this is forward facing eyes. A horses have kind of angled eyes. So they're, they're looking at the side and they're looking at the front at the same time. So it's kind of, um, it's kind of very special. So he had this flexibility, you know, they get him to talk and there's been rumors that they use peanut butter or something like that or um, fishing line to gently pull the lip to make it twitch. Nothing, you know, cruel or anything like that. 
He actually, after a couple of uh, shows, he um, was able to talk or move his lips as animated as this um, in between um, uh, uh, Alan Howe's uh, voice. So Alan Howe would stop talking and Mr. Ed would just do this, these aping you know, mouth shapes, which was interesting. So it was quite, uh, uh, int- quite a, a, a clever um, horse. So the interaction between these two, um, you know, was uh, was the, the main source of comedy and all of the different uh, uh, ways that the horse would try to, you know, be human or try to create or try to get human things like electric blankets and you know glasses and and uh color tv sets and things like that although <laughs> they wouldn't have helped much because uh the show all five seasons were in black and white they were fantastic together when you see them um you know uh all the cast actually worked really brilliantly well and they had some you know famous walk-ons as well famous famous people walking on these two, they just had this, this incredible synergy and, uh, and he had fantastic personality. Um, and it, was just, it just worked. It just snapped. It just worked perfectly. So the horse, the horse's ability to create a believable um, lip sync and um, the voice actor and, of course, you know, the, the body performance, the, the acting uh, in that space, the the two of them just worked really well. This is Connie Hines. He played uh, K. Uh, played um, Carol. And uh, you know he would he he was like he he get to do all these really interesting things like paint signs and pictures and things like that. So he was quite a versatile uh, actor. And of course. Uh, Clint Eastwood played in an episode. So this I'm quite interested in. I found this, uh, and of course it's cropped, so it's like a it's a close up of him talking. Um, so I kind of like that. I'm going to use that as uh, as reference, um, and I'm also going to. Uh, but I'm because it's cropped. I have to sort of construct the head and the body from other pictures and hopefully glue it all together. She's lovely. Um, So I'm also using this photograph because it's quite clear and you can clearly see his his eyes and the shape of his, uh, you know, distinctive patterns, etc. This is Clint Eastwood again, and again. This is incredible uh, amount of uh, flexibility horses have with their faces. So we'll discover that in a sec. I'll show you some extraordinary pictures. This is the beginning where he pushes open the doors and introduces himself straight away out of the gate. So most of the time he does this sort of upper lip muttering, so you can see his uh, teeth, upper upper teeth quite well. So it's very distinctive. So it's just the lip. It's not even the mouth open. It's just the lip moving. This, that's it. But look how flexible the, these lips are. They're incredible. You know, and they have a, like, this is almost like a donkey bray. Uh, look at how, how um, incredibly shaped these are. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's incredible. Really uh, interesting animals, interesting subject to draw. It's with uh, Clint Eastwood again, Connie. Connie, of course, was... Uh, Connie Hines was a, um, who played Carol. She was a dancer, and she gets to dance in the show a lot. Now, these two are my favorites. It's uh, Addison and Kay, who are 
Wilbur's next door neighbours, and um, this guy Larry Keating was in um, a George Powell movie when worlds collide. That's the first time I'd seen him. He is brilliant in the show, absolutely brilliant. He's really a master of um, understatement and sarcasm, and um, he's just really play. You know, the, all of the characters play it really well, but he in particular. And the enmity between Ed and uh, and um, Addison, um, usually centering around his apple tree, uh, is, is just really very, very funny. So he's a great guy. This is a Palomino, of course, it's very distinctive. So we're going to be using a little bit of this because it's, you can see more of the, uh, the body, the anatomy. And we'll go back to the other picture. Actually, you might just um, shortcut it and go back here. Where is he? Okay, here we go. So, what I've done, I've started drawing out all of these uh, little details I've gotten down a lot of this stuff. I'm simplifying a lot of these lines. So what am I looking for here? I'm looking for a lot of these details that denote this uh, flexibility, to create this level of um, expression in the horse. So I'm going to be looking at the eyes and the mouth and just to sort of bring out uh, a lot of, um, I guess, perceived personality. Um, actually, before I do that, I might go back to the Palomino shot and just sort of fix up the geometry or the, the um, anatomy a little bit of uh, his body. So horses are very um, muscular, usually, so you can see quite a lot of their large muscles and things quite clearly so that's a feature this is also this uh, sort of a sh uh, shoulder area which is uh, important okay I'm not sure if I've, um, we may run into strife because his hair is, is blonde, very, very light. So the more pencil lines I put in there, the harder that's going to be to draw convincingly. Um, I've also continued it over there a little bit because it's, I want to give an impression of uh, like an unruly hairdo, but, um, Um, just, just long and, you know, almost like a, like a, um, hippie, if he was a human. So a lot of this, um, I need to really keep in mind a lot of the, oops, a lot of the, uh, structure of the muscles. Um, I guess because it's it's more or less a cartoon, there's a little bit of leeway, perhaps, with the anatomy, but uh, I need to keep it as close as I can to the horse anatomy without sort of simplifying it too much. Hmm. Right, okay. I think th the trick is not to um, commit to these muscles too early or too much. 
because they can and also don't make it too angular because then it draws attention to itself. So I think that might be a good uh, thing to keep in mind. I'm going to shade it as we go. Going with the, this part of the neck, there was a picture somewhere. Mm, I don't think that's it. Go back. Hmm. Okay. All right. So I I know that there's there's this big muscle coming down um, from the neck, but I'm hiding that with a lot of this long hair. So remember the this is the cheek over there. Yeah, it should work all right. Should work all right. All right, let's try to commit. Okay, thank you. Now, I, I, I'm inevitably going to make mistakes because I, I don't know all of these bits and pieces. So I don't know what they actually do or mean or, or whatever. I know that he hasn't got a bit in his mouth. So I know that. So there's nothing going through this area. But the harness and the straps and things are quite a mystery to me because um, they look very um, intricate and purposeful and I don't know their purpose. So how's that? It's like looking at an engine of a car you think oh well, that uh, there you go that's what makes it go but you have no idea what those things are or exactly what they do, those bits and pieces. So it's the same thing with uh, Mr. Ed. Well, certainly this harness anyway. There's quite a bit of um, detail. So I'm going to pretend I know a little bit about it and, and, um, and put them in as best I can. Leather is really nice to play with, I think, um, with a pencil because it's you know it's got a beautiful texture, and uh, you you know it's quite um, satisfying I think to um, capture that texture with a pencil. Uh, lighten that up a little bit. Perhaps not as uh, it's not as contrasty as as metal, you know, because metal's got a lot of uh, reflections and things. But um, it's not too shabby, actually. Not too shabby at all.
So that was a little bit of a, a change for me um, today to come up with uh, uh, an idea for this caricature. And I thought at the last moment, I don't know, I was listening to some um, soundtracks, you know, TV soundtracks and things like, I think I was listening to Wintin Tin. And then um, it occurred to me that uh, it would be nice to do an animal. And I thought, well, maybe I'll do Lassie or something, you know. And then I just thought of, um, why not go bigger? So, rather than do an elephant. Um, so I, I decided to do a horse and I think, you know, arguably, Mr. Ed is probably the world's most famous horse. Um, Far that notwithstanding. So, you know, I mean, you could say, well, the world's most famous horse would be Trigger or Farlap or someone like that. But I think more people in the world have actually seen Mr. Red than Farlap or Trigger or Topper or any of the other TV horses, cowboy horses. So we're building up a little bit of uh, nice, I think, contrasts happening in here. I might just, uh, while I'm here, I might sort of create this um, contrasts. Might help us when we're establishing the level of light and shade overall. If we know what we're building up to. Oscar paint pen. The pencils I'm using are uh, uh, Prismacolors. These are quite soft brown. This is terracotta and white. And I'm also using a harder color pencil, which is a polychromo. So because these are soft, they tend to break. That's why you probably need an electric uh, pencil sharpener in order to create an, a, a nice point. Okay, so there's a lot of um, flaps here in this stuff. This um, harness, which I am not understanding why there's so much detail, why there's so many straps. This is the underside of the jaw, and this is the the side strap. So he hasn't got anything. They're just like a harness, a head head harness, um, which I think is just the basic structure or the basic um, mechanism that they attach bits to and reins too. You know, it's um, he can't talk with a bit in his mouth. And it doesn't look good. You know, obviously when they're riding him, he would probably have a bit, but I think normally it just doesn't look right. It looks weird and that's probably cruel as well. How would you like it with a bit in your mouth? Bet you wouldn't like it. Well, neither would they. You can't tell me that it's a, it's a natural thing to have in your face. I'm not a horsey person, apart from Mr. Ed. I did love Mr. Ed. But yeah, normally I'm not really into... I'm not really into horses. Um, as much. I respect them and I know that you don't approach them from behind to get on them. I know that much. 
I've never been kicked, but I've seen a few people. It's always good to check out on uh, TikTok, isn't it? Um, people getting owned by horses. They do bite too. Had a few um, close calls, a few snaps from from horses if they feel like uh, you know you're upsetting them or not in charge probably they like to sort of let you know that you're not fooling anyone okay so there's a lot of um, because their eyes are really on the side here there's a lot of um, You have to take that into account. So the expression is horsey, it's not human, right? So you have to keep that in mind. Um, so you keep your eye on the prize. Have a look at the reference and, you know, if you've drawn horse eyes before, that's a good, um, that's a nice little exercise to do if you want to try that out that's really good there is a similarity between horses and humans and uh, there are a lot of differences So, this is the white of his eyes. You generally don't see a lot of that, but um, I'm putting that in simply because of the, um, the shape of his eyes and the, you know, the expression is, is kind of um, giving me, an imp it's giving me an impression that this is, this is something that's important. That the eyes should be um, you need to focus on them quite a lot in order to create a sense of uh, believable detail right so this is uh, where are we where at the okay, so this, this photograph that I'm working on I'm running out of space because it is quite cropped so we'll have to refer to another picture in a moment so I have the full DVD sets of uh, Mr. Ed and um, I love watching them and I particularly love Addison in the stories I think it was the first two seasons that Larry Keating was in and then the character got replaced. I think he may have passed away. Okay. Ooh, what? Oh, have to. Ah, okay. I see. We've got to continue this um, weird structure around the ear, otherwise it won't work. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing, to, to be honest with that thing. I have no idea. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. Okay, so he's got a lot of... He has long eyelashes, because horses do. Okay, I'm happy with that. I think that'll work for now. 
Let's continue on with some of these details around the schnoz, around the nose. And of course he has a pattern down that comes down the face. So this is going to be a thing, isn't it, with this some um, white? Oops, see how soft that is? Okay. All right, so the, this is um, it's going to be interesting. Um, this pattern comes down here and it's, it kind of um, does a weird thing in the nostril. Just removing some of the, uh, the brown. Actually, might have a bit of trouble getting white. An intensity of white here at all. It's quite a lot of um, pencil. Uh, one, two, three. That one maybe. Okay. Mm. Not hundred percent sold on this. There's a lot of. Um, I'm missing a, a bulge down. So I'll try to correct this. I haven't left enough space. Um, there's a there's a beautiful bulge that's coming down there that way. So trying to catch that within the limited space. I haven't allowed myself enough space for that, but that's okay. That's all right. I've made this area bigger, which is my, it was a gamble, and it might still work, we'll see, we don't know, anything can happen. So it's all a matter of balancing the light and shade you know it looks like it might work all right hmm Now the nostril and the shadows around the nostril keep them warm because he is Palomino after all. Let's see if I can fix this. There's some texture in here, these bumps, which are if you ever touch the horse's face, this is where the stubble is or the the hairs, they have hairs on their nose which comically has been removed by electric razor um, in the show, but we're going to put it back a little bit because it should really be there. It's a lovely texture, isn't it? This um, muzzle. Very tactile. Okay, good. So here we go. We, oh, uh, before we put the black in, oh, let's hit this. Ah, a little bit 
sharp at that point. And uh, we we'll get back into here with a bit of light. Try and um, build that up as much as we can while we have the opportunity. And uh, this is going to be really fun. These teeth, I'm looking forward to this. Oh, beautiful. A bit different texture to normal teeth, you know, dog teeth or human teeth. I, I can't comment on cows or anything else. I haven't really had a look at their teeth, but horses I have. They're um, interesting texture. I think it comes from their their diet. Grass and hay and sugar and oranges. Apples, sorry, not oranges. Okay, so far I think we're doing all right with this. Um, just want to get some of this lovely um, lighting from, you know, the, the, um, the uh, actually fill light. The main light's coming in from the left, but there's a lovely fill light that's coming in. Um, named after its inventor, Phil. Um, there's a fill light coming in that's, um, do it well exactly what it says it's filling in the shadows with a little bit more light so it's lighting the shadow areas so you get a little bit more definition which creates a three-dimensional sort of effect so we're going to play with that a little bit This is a Posca um, paint pen, but it has a brush tip, so it can go thick and thin. Just help out with the establishing some more highlights, which I think are helpful to create a more of a contrast and a three-dimensional effect. If you thought a horse was easier than a human, I think by now, you've realized that that ain't so. Everything's difficult. No. Um, they all have their own peculiar uh, challenges. It's a, it's a really interesting. I love drawing horses. And this is a challenge, believe me, you know. Um, he is an actor, he's a horse actor. So the challenge is, of course, to establish some form of um, recognition so that it looks like a misdirect. And I think it's getting there. I'm quite happy with how it's progressing a little bit. So let's build up some more contrast and try to get some drama happening in the lower part of the of the face. So 
so I'm paint drawing making the the shadow area a bit darker this sort of umbra or pen umbra and that's going to help create a three-dimensional effect which should be very nice Okay, um, I need to um, articulate that Palomino white stripe down the face. So I need to just make it just where the where the white is, um, and just uh, fix it up a little bit so that it's stronger. Okay. All right. Um, what can we do here? We've got uh, to build up that roundness of the nose and the muscles under the eye. Um, fix this up a bit. There's a nice highlight coming in from that side as well. It's going to be magic so that the, the white against the dark shadows that's nice there's a shadow from the harness coming into which I have to somehow refer to So far, so good. Let us, so I'll just put a bit of shine on the edges here. Just to help it. I think it looks very animated so far. I like this, uh, how it's coming out. I'm just going to work on this area down here and um, I'm going to do that, so just create a bit more drama with the black. That's good. You can see how the texture is really nice. It's coming out quite well. got like a three-dimensional effect you know like this nice sort of muzzle I think so far so good I'm gonna hit that there's some fine hairs that are coming out there I'll hit that with a white pen in a minute okay so the underside of this is uh, round so I can afford to thicken that up a bit. That's nice. And now, folks, we get down to the very interesting area of the teeth. And we have to handle this quite uh, correctly, the right amount, not too much black, don't outline everything. Just help with the contrast. You don't need to outline everything, you know. Some things you it makes sense to outline, like the overall silhouette. 
you know, or things that stand out, like noses and, you know, this area here, where you've got to clearly make the teeth stand out from the rest of the, the back of the mouth, which I think you're looking into. Now, the, this is quite an interesting problem, because I'm, I'm not sure I've made some allowances for this, this shape, the lips, but I'm not quite sure how what's lip and what's inner mouth, to put it bluntly. I'm not 100% sure, so I'll try to make a guess, I guess, but uh, I think that might work. I'll just warm it a little bit with a pencil. It's the same with the, the gums over here. So I just need to put in the detail, but remember that this is shadowed. This is the strong shadow on the gums created by the muzzle. Yeah, that's good. Put a bit of definition out there. Yeah. So I'm going to make this uh, highlight there a little bit stronger. Let's use this. Uh, Seems to work alright. So try to keep these highlights as much as I can. Um, just don't put too many. I think the, the key is not to over exaggerate those um, hairs, but it's just a fine detail which looks texturally more horsey. And you need that, I think. I have a feeling that um, even though, you know, they're not that visible, I think there it makes sense to put them in, feature them somehow. Now his tongue's really interesting because he's turning his tongue sideways, so there's a little bit of sideways movement in the mouth. Um, but it's kind of hard to explain with a pencil what's going on with that, so I'm going to simplify it a little bit. Okay, here we go. There's a few hairs down there as well, but... There we go. 
That's sweet. Kind of nice. I like that. I like that. So, Emberwick, any of Into you unknown territory with the neck. Because uh, I don't have any strong reference uh, for it to explain it. I should have probably had that uh, handled before, but um, I thought, you know, uh, what the hell, we'll wing it. All right, so now I don't have ears in this one, so I'll have to go to another, another picture. Let's see if I can make a guess at this line here. Okay, so there's a light coming in from there. That's important. Now, the reason why I'm doing this before I put any black in is because um, white going over black will make grey. And I don't want to do that because it changes the colour temperature of the pencils of the drawing. So, with because there's, a, there's going to be a lot of white pencil over this because he, you know, you have to give that Palomino look, right? So you have to be careful with how much black pencil is um, is actually used. You can see it's interacting with the brown pencil a little bit, so it's going a little bit pinky, but that's all right for the moment. So I wonder if we're getting enough of this uh, white muzzle, white... Uh, I think we're doing all right so far. I think we're all right. So, um, yeah, this is the photograph. Okay, again, um, I don't do the black yet because it changes the color of the white. So, I'm going to put enough white uh, hair in there to really build up the level and hairiness of his um, blonde locks. Trying to keep enough definition in there. I'll get in there with a white pen, uh, white brush pen in a sec, but that, that'll help create the contrast in there. But I kind of like this. It's it's working so far, I think, quite well. There you go. Good. Now you can get in with the the detailing here and there. Ah, oh, yeah. Before I do that. This is definitely going to change the colour. So just... Uh, is that... Oh, it's the inside. Okay, good. All right. So everything, you know, like human ears, horses' ears have a particular shape which you've got to obey and think about the, you know, the angle and the geometry or the, the anatomy, sorry, of the, uh, of the ears. 
and um, kind of respond to that uh, with the knowledge of the, you know, the folds and how they look. Okay, that's clearly the, that seems to work all right. They're beautiful shapes, aren't they? You know, dogs' ears especially. Um, there's a lot of I love drawing dogs. Dogs' ears are brilliant to draw. Is it they're more um, form, follow, function than the human ear? We can't cock our <laughs> ears. You know, those that try look weird. So don't try it. Don't cock your ears. Well, so far so good. That looks all right to me. I think I quite like that. You get a bit of uh, definition in here. Hopefully, it won't destroy the the beauty of the white um, pencil. So just a little bit of shadow where the hair falls on the head. You know, I think that works quite well. Okay. So there's a lot of uh, tendons in this part of the, the head that are going in from the cheek. And there's also some distinctive uh, textures too. So anything could be part of the recognition factor of Mr. Ed. We don't know. So if you neglect something, that might be the one thing that that is the you know that is the the recognition factor. So everything has to be looked at from the point of view that it could be very, very important. Now, his mane is not as long as this. I just need to, to exaggerate it because, it, you know, part of the feature of a horse, and especially Palomino, is this um, beautiful blonde hair. And um, they got a sort of a honey coated, honey coloured coat, but their hair is, is beautiful and long, and it's a feature. So I don't want to hide that, I want to sort of exaggerate that. I think that's an important aspect because he's a really strong representative of, of um, Palomin Palomino. Yeah, it looks, I think that's all right. I, it, I, you know, he is honey colored, so I don't want to overstep the, these shadows over here, make them too dark. I'll just help out the, the brown a little bit. I think that's, that's about it. That's about all you can do. Yeah. Maybe add a little bit of light. That'll do. All right, let's fix this. Um, where, where do we go now? Where do we go from here? Oh, 
Welcome to the barn. So I've never seen the barn actually uh, from the whole barn. This is the first time. It is the first time for anything, but I've never seen the, the whole barn before. I've only seen the ground floor. So I just thought I'd put the barn in. Why did I do that double peak? Oh well. Um, I just thought I'd put the barn in, be fun. So there you go. One barn made to order. I'll just make the roof a bit more like so. Maybe this. Like so. Give it a bit more definition. Now, where's the light coming from over there? Okay, so we'll make this one darker. So I'm just making that the black pencil a bit warmer. Now I'm going to fix this. Oh, before I do that, I'll fix the uh, the ribbon. No, that didn't work. What happened there? Threw myself off. Okay. Dear, oh dear, another horizontal, so let's... So now let's uh, fix the rest, the highlights. Remember where your light's coming from? It's coming from the top left, most of it. Some of it's reflected, coming in from the right, but generally most of it's coming in. from above and to the left. That's good.
think that's pretty close there. Maybe a little bit of help with a point Posca, point marker, point pen. So far, so good. All right, so we're pretty close here. I'm going to fix this up before I do anything because this could be an issue. Um, the horseshoe. ED. that one over there we'll use a pen to do the M-I-S-T E-R okay Ooh, we should put a dot there um right so I'm going to um, put in some contrasting brush strokes some darker brush strokes here and there I think would be good. Oops. Okay, so I'm going to put in the negative space. I'm going to paint that black. So I'm going to have to do a bit of cutting in here and there, which is going to be interesting. So this is what I'm using here is a Zig paint uh, pen, a uh, paintbrush um, or brush pen. So the ink is uh, it's kind of it's like a calligraphy ink. So it's got a nice flow. Um, dries very flat, which is good, and quite strong. Almost as strong as Indian ink. Of course, Indian ink is uh, probably the it's pro it's the most contrasty. It's very very black. Very nice to use, but can cause problems when you're using it like this. As I've found in the past. Because it tends to dry a bit splotchy or um, not as flat as I would like. So I'm going right up to the, um, I'm leaving the, the outlines a little bit. So it's almost like a double exposure in a way.
So the reason why I'm doing that is uh, because, you know, the grey paper is really good for establishing the tone and the form. But I love uh, contrasts and um, that's what I really, really enjoy, things that pop out. I love th the three-dimensional effect. I love 3D anyway, but you know, that sort of magical thing where the things seem to want to pop off the page, pop up off the page. Kind of rem reminiscent in a way of um, my how I used to respond to Jack Kirby's Marvel covers. Um, in the 60s they would jump off the page and you know um you just have to buy them they jumped off the off the rack and into my pocket and i would um pour over them like every single stroke every brush stroke pen stroke they were wonderful And the storytelling, you know, the, the sort of uh, staccato, perfunctory um, dialogue, reminiscent of uh, film noir, I guess, it's sort of short, um, snappy answers. Loved it, loved it. And his covers were very three dimensional. They jumped up off the off the page. You know, the, the heroes were um, the whole design was intended to. Um, Trounce the competition, of course it did. Charlton and DC were no match for it. Larger than life characters, you know, action, unbelievable amount of energy. It's beautiful stuff, really. A testament to the creator's um, brilliance and sense of purpose and destiny almost you know where would we be without it today when they knew they knew they were doing something special and they were just and Stan Lee to his credit stood just stood back like the uh, circus ringmaster saying well that's they're about to do something off the books something out of the ordinary I'll just stand by here and out of the way and let them do their thing and he did Let's try to get the, um, oh, I'm going to use a, another Posca, big chunky one. It's really good because they dry flat like the brush pen, they're nice. So it's a good sort of chunky way of getting this area painted. Very, very cool. What a, what a joy it is to draw you know, this magnificent animal, beautiful actor. So that is going to dry nice and flat. That's going to be a treat. It's going to be an awesome, uh, awesome thing. So um, let's have a little, yeah. 
So um, do yourself a treat. Catch up with uh, Mr. Ed and his exploits, especially the first season or the first couple of seasons where um, you can actually see Larry Keating. This man. This is his wife, also a dancer. I believe she's still alive. Um, they were brilliant. They were these two together were fantastic. She used to say to him, you know, come on, doll. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Larry Keating. So he's a great, um, great star. What a beautiful face. I must draw him sometime. All right. Well, this is, uh, it's drying nicely. You can tell it's, it'll, it'll, it'll work. Don't worry about it. So Mr. Ed's the Palomino. This is a very distinctive, beautiful face um, from uh, television. And I think I've gotten some of his personality, I think. Uh, definitely horsey. <laughs> so, um, all right, I'll leave it. I'll leave it in your capable hands, whether you decide whether it looks enough like him or not. This is a, a, an interesting caricature for me. As this is proof positive. As I've always said, you know, caricature is uh, a process. It's a process, okay? So you exaggerate and you simplify and you use those two dynamics in, in concert, in a dialogue, in the drawing, all right? So when you draw something and you try to uh, enjoy it and create a sense of adventure and drama, anything can happen. Don't be scared of failure, you know. Um, then you just you just profit from it because you know I've learned a lot about, especially about this. This is like reminds me of a, a, a manatee's face or a seal's face or something, or even your dog's face. You know, um, those beautiful textural qualities of the muzzle, which uh, you know we don't have that, but uh, it's nice. It's it it feels good. I think I'm, I've enjoyed this. I hope you guys have too. This is uh, Franz Cantor uh, saying to you, I'll catch you on the flip side.